So this is a little story about how I got stuck, why I got stuck and what I did to recover. So it all begins when I'm out camping and I drive a few tracks um, without my trailer attached and I think okay um, I can drive these with the trailer. Now the trailer itself is a pretty big and heavy trailer. It weighs 2300 kilograms, uh, I know because I put it on a weighbridge, and it's got a wider track than the Ranger so it does seriously restrict what the Ranger can do off-road but nevertheless um, it will go along some off-road and, and dirt, dirt roads. Now when I drove this track I realised that um, there was one bog hole which was probably going to cause a problem with the trailer and I thought okay if I do come along here with the trailer what am I going to do if I get it wrong and I could see that there was a number of winching points also that it wasn't the bog hole wasn't overly deep and I thought well it's it's drivable I could of course simply have not driven the track but you know I'm into four wheel drive, this is what I do. I look, look for challenges and it was a convenient track to take out so I was not going to not drive it just because there was a chance of getting bogged. So then I found um, the mud bog and I set the cameras up and uh, I had the car in low range when I was driving this track. Not so much because of the speed um, but because I wanted a close ratio gearbox, second, third, fourth, low, all close together and that gave me a lot of flexibility in gearing whereas if I was in high range I've got really just first and second and then there can be a bit of a delay whilst and a big sort of the car goes from second to first and that can definitely lose you traction in mud bogs and also there's a big gear ratio run from jump from first gear high range to second gear high range whereas with second third fourth in that sort of space um, it's, it's a much closer ratio so that's why I often use low range in those sort of situations and particularly when towing as well there's a lot of extra drag. So anyway, I uh, finished that bog hole and then um, put the car into high range and thought, okay, that's it, smooth sailing to the main dirt road now, off I go home. And then a couple of hundred metres later on, there was another bog hole and I thought, hang on, I've remembered it wrong. This is actually the difficult one, not the previous one. There'd been some rain or whatever else there, I just hadn't remembered it. So here again you can see someone's attempted to make a bypass track around that little mud bog and there's really no need for it it's it's not that deep it's not that soft there's just needless bypass marks um, why do you do that why don't you just check the bog and just drive through it and um, it will all be fine so I thought okay I'm going to um, video this one as well getting a bit later than I thought which is always the way right I mean it's a four o'clock track syndrome um, the later it gets the more interesting life is going to become it just seems to be that way anyway I set the camera up um, and I drive through it and here's where I make a horrendous mistake and I probably had a 70% chance maybe 60% chance of getting through that that bog hole um, but what I the mistake I made reduced that chance significantly and of course what I'd done I'd left the vehicle in high range and I'd forgotten it was in high range so I moved off thinking it was in low range and driving it that way and um, that really didn't help me getting into the mud bog and as you would have seen in my other mud, mud video if you watched it um, in high range four wheel drive the ranger has stability control enabled which should be switched off if you're going to uh, drive it in high range four wheel drive and I hadn't done that because in low range stability control switches off um, automatically so basically what I hadn't done was set the vehicle up correctly because I'd interrupted my routine and I drove expecting it to be in low range and it was in high range and I didn't realise that until I was in and I got bogged. Okay so driving the car in and I you know I think okay this is probably not going to work and then the engine doesn't bog down but the wheels do it starts to spin and that's it i just give up pretty quickly there's just no point just sitting there just um maximum revs i can i know when a car is going to bog this car is going to get bogged i was not going to come out of there um, without a winch so you know you give it up early rather than sit there um, spinning spinning the wheels in sometimes if the car is just moving then you can you know wave the steering wheel from side to side give it more revs or all of that stuff but um this case uh just wasn't going to work so um, time to winch then and for that 
fairly straightforward in as much that you're just pulling straight out there. The difficulty was um, there were no anchor points, no trees directly ahead of the vehicle. So it's going to be an offset pull with what I term a fleet angle. And that is the difference between the winch coming straight out and actually where um, you actually need to, the, the winch cable is actually going to point. So the, that's possible to winch and what I do there is I pull out all of the winch rope apart from five turns on the drum the, the minimum um, I've only run 20 meters on my winch uh, drum itself and I've got two extension ropes one of 20 meters one of 30 meters plus a bunch of tree trunk protectors so I've got a fair bit of, of, of length if needed and that allowed me to run um, the winch rope out to an anchor point probably 30 40 meters away um, and then I could winch in now because I taken a lot of winch rope off the drum then I could actually winch in a fair distance maybe six seven meters um, maybe four five actually um, without actually uh, bunching up too much or it did bunch up but it didn't bunch up to the point on the winch drum where it's going to cause me a problem and it was only possible because I run a relatively short amount of rope on the drum and I could pull it all off um, because in winching quite often you cannot pull straight ahead you have to do some form of off offset winching. In this um, video you'll see me drive and winch and you'll hear people say oh no you should never drive a winch it shock loads to winch and um, you shouldn't shock load anything which is not designed for a shock load that's true now in this, but what you want to do with any form of recovery situation is absolutely minimize the forces involved and one way you can do that when winching is to actually uh, drive and winch because that reduces the forces required. Now if you're winching up a rocky hill and you roll backwards a long way yes that can shock load things and that, that's bad for everything um, concerned it potentially could snap things which otherwise wouldn't have snapped. In this case I was never going to roll backwards that just simply wasn't, wasn't going to happen. Um, the worst that was going to happen is that the line would go momentarily slack. Now if you pull a lot of slack line onto a winch it can bird's nest which um, is just really problematic that can damage the rope and it can make it um, difficult to pull out but in this case um, the amount of slack was just going to be pretty minimal it wouldn't have birds nested so I, I was comfortable to drive and winch and just assist the winch out in that way. Now at some point I have to reposition the winch and it just shows you there I mean it looks like the car can drive out but there's so much drag from the trailer that heavy trailer there of a different we all set you know and the car now has really muddy tyres and it's still on a slight upslope it doesn't have the traction 
to pull the trailer um, and I can feel that I don't need to sit there and spin the wheels for ages just to fig figure, that, figure that out. So what I do is I reposition the winch a little bit further up um, and that allows me two things. One, it reduces that fleet angle which has now got greater as I got closer to the winch anchor point and the second thing it does I can pull that winch rope off again and I uh, get back to my four or five turns on the drum only and then I'm, I'm good to go. So what do we learn from this video? Well, the first one is with trailers, I do like to drive the track, heavy trailers anyway, drive the track beforehand. Um, if I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't have known what to expect, whether it was possible, etc. And they can be really hard to turn around on tracks. They can be, they make recovery a lot more difficult. So I do like to have an idea of where I'm going with, with a heavier trailer, or at least have a bunch of other people with me. And then um, I also had a plan going in. For, okay, if I don't make this, I know how to recover. Um, I have a winch, there are winch points, the winch points, the winch anchor points are strong enough. If that doesn't work, I have other options. I have max tracks, I have a high lift jack I could jack things up with, even potentially winch with that. Um, I have plans there as well. And worst case, I've literally got a caravan, I can climb in and sleep, I've got food, you know, I could probably stay there for a week and I'd be, be okay. And by that time, I'm sure I could, I could have got myself out um, uh, somehow. Um, then make sure that the car is set up for the obstacle which is the mistake i made about high range and low range um you, you know and that could be lockers it could be electronic settings whatever the case may be there i got myself out of my usual routine and that's why i didn't realize the car wasn't set up the way it should be so that's important just double check your setup before you drive off so I hope you found this video useful. I'll be doing a few more like these. They kind of won't really be planned. They'll, they'll just be um, whatever happens to me as I'm out wandering Australia and um, see if I can make anything interesting out of it. Thanks for watching. Any questions, drop them in the comments.